So, you want to do some cool stuff with the holdout shader. Well, hold on a moment, let me go turn on the air conditioning. Because air conditioning makes it cool, and I said hold. Hey guys, I'm Methods by Kai, I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender 2.81 once again, taking a look at some good stuff. I'm excited because we got some stuff to do. Happy, happy, whatchamacallit, by the way, um, New Year. Yeah, it's kind of far from that, but still, I don't think I said that earlier. Anyway, hope you're having a great 2020, 2020 so far. We're gonna get started. I want to do some cool stuff. I have this scene that I've made here. It's a whole full scene. It has an animation. Let me play it real quick for you. And you can see I have two different things that I'm doing with the holdout shader here. And I'll show you exactly what they are in a minute. I'll break everything down. So uh, the uh, text kind of comes up like that, does some cool stuff, and then it swipes away like that. Super cool stuff, right? So the first one, if I turn my uh, overlays back on and I go to solid viewport shading, you can see I have a gig gigantic plane right here. Um, and this plane, I just added by hitting Shift A and then go to Mesh Plane, of course. Minimum button to pan, pan around my scene, by the way. And with this giant plane, I hit S to scale it up because it was like that size, and I hit S to scale it up. Um, then I went to the Material tab and added the Material. Hit uh, Use Nodes here, and then uh, Use Nodes, and then I added in the uh, the Holdout Shader right here. I changed that from Principal BSDF to uh, to Holdout, which is right here. And then what that does is when I have my scene here in the scene tab and under film set to transparent, then it makes it uh, transparent. Now, if you don't have this checked to transparent, it's just going to be black. Um, and you can see it's actually black. Yeah, see, it's black uh, and it's only going to be it's only going to be black unless you have transparency checked right here under film. So make sure you have that or else it's not going to work. So now after I did that, uh, what I did was, as you can see, this is kind of off center. So if I hit uh, seven on my numpad to go into the front facing view you can see that there we got some stuff that's kind of off center right now so this is the plane um, it's actually rotated uh, if I hit uh, if I go to the side view you can see this is kind of like the side of it it's kind of rotated like this so I hit R Y actually R X sorry and I kind of rotated it like this just a little tiny bit um, and uh, and yeah so it's kind of off center a little bit in the text the, the text is what's really off center so the next thing I did was I added some text and you can see if I hit H to hide my big plane uh, and this is off center as well, so it's very, very off center. Um, I hit Shift A to add in the text here, and then just hit R X ninety to rotate it ninety degrees on my X axis. Uh, ninety degree, ninety on my numpad, by the way. Tab to go into edit mode, and I just changed the text to something else, right? And then went to the font tab, um, and then uh, hit this little folder to get a font. Um, so that was all I did with that. Uh, tab to go in and out of edit mode, by the way. Uh, yeah, so then what I did was I hit R to rotate it a little bit. So I rotated it because I knew that I wanted this to be 3D. I wanted the text to be 3D and I wanted the holdout shader to kind of block it until I used the value of, um, that's uh, too far up by the way. There we go. I, until I used the value of um, extrude to make the text come out. So you can see here. This is what the text is doing. So you can see I have animated the extrude value by hovering my cursor over top of it and hitting I, I on my keyboard. Then I went to a new frame, which is this frame right here, frame 100, turn, turn the extrude value up to like 1.27 and then hit I, uh, hovering my cursor over top of this box once again. So now the extrude value is going to let me kind of push through the, uh, through the holdout shader here. So you can see what it's doing when I scrub through here. You can see uh, it's kind of pushing through the holdout shader and kind of coming out on the other side. But since the holdout shader cuts off anything that's behind it, it looks like it's coming out of nowhere, which is really cool, right? So uh, the, the cool thing is, is that uh, now when I take a look at this, you can see that the text coming out of the holdout shader now looks like it's kind of sweeping up like diagonally. Um, because it's rotated. So if I had this text super straight like uh, this, like this, right? And then I did the extrude value, it would just come through at the same time, which is not, which is no fun, right? That's no fun. It's coming through all at the same time, and it's just popping in from nowhere. But because I've rotated it like so, I just hit double, I just double tapped R and just rotate it until I got a place. I can, I can rotate it this way, double tap R, and I can just change the extrude value from this way, and it comes out of there too. Uh, so yeah, that's what I did, just so it comes out of nowhere. And then the second thing I did was uh, I had this. Uh, actually, wait, is that that's right? Uh, yeah. So I actually have to. I had to actually uh, offset my camera as well because the, if the camera was in the center, it would look like it was like off center. So what I did was I tried to line up the text with the camera as much as possible to make the text look like it was straight because the camera 
looked like this before I did anything to it and it was completely off center and that looks like it's off to the side so I uh, I made sure that the camera was directly in line with the text instead of being like over here like it's supposed to be next thing uh, alt H to unhide by the way I keep in H to hide things and alt H to unhide them uh, next thing, the second holdout shader thingy comes up out of nowhere. So I just took a plane, the same exact plane, hit Shift D to duplicate it, um, and then hit S Z, right, to scale it down. On the first keyframe right here, I have a couple keyframes. The first keyframe I added was I uh, added a keyframe of zero. So I hit S Z zero on my numpad, and then hit I scaling to insert a scaling keyframe right here, so that it would zoom up to uh, to here. And these are all just like the same keyframes. I just like, you know, just I just scaled it up a little bit pretty much as we don't really need even need these three to be honest with you, but I just added them just so I could like slow it down and made it make it stop. So um, we have zero right here. Then I move to this frame, scale it up just a little tiny bit with S Z and then hit I scaling. And then same thing right here. I scale it up a bunch more so it will go faster in this area. And then same thing here from here to here. I just hit scaling to scale it up. And then this one, it's going to go all the way out. And then um, that's the stuff. So these two right here, actually these two are not scaling keyframes. These two are rotation keyframes. So what I did was I took these two and uh, right on this first keyframe, hit I, rotation. And then I went to this keyframe and hit I, rotation right there. So then it kind of rotates, you know, the way when it goes, which is nice. And then I made it rotate a little bit more once it gets to frame 200. So then it kind of just pushes it out of the frame and kind of comes from the center, which looks really cool, like split it in half. Um, and that was pretty much all I did. I did some more stuff with the text, obviously, but this, this is about the holdout shader. So, uh, but yeah, so that's that. I did uh, some pretty cool stuff with the holdout shader. You guys have been asking me what you can really do with it. A couple of people have been kind of confused about what the hold, holdout shader is really supposed to be used for. And this is uh, pretty much it. You can do a lot of other things with it too, but uh, this is pretty much it. Oh, and by the way, I also, because the uh, big giant plane... Uh, with, is rotated not to the camera. It's kind of like at this angle, like diagonal like this instead of like straight across uh from frame 50 to frame 100 i made sure that it went straight directly to the camera because right here you can see if you if you take a look at the thickness of the bottom of this letter to the bottom of this letter you see it's getting thinner as it goes across and i didn't want it to stop like that so while the text was coming out uh, and still like sliding up like this and and forming i made it so that the holdout plane uh rotated so that uh, the the width of the text letters would be the same all the way across. So right now, like I said, super thick over here, super thin. But by the time I did it, I rotated it so that this is the same width as this over here. So I just hit R uh, R Z R Z I believe yeah. I hit R Z just to uh, you know make sure that it's the it's the correct width all the way across. And that's pretty much the only other thing I did. So I hope you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, enjoyed today's kind of breakdown tutorial uh, of uh, some things that I did with the holdout shader. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.